What is going on guys? My name is Aaron and this is the game day hour. We're back in the setup. We're back here. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the NBA playoffs. Now, the playoff brackets have not been fully secured, so we're not going to be going through game by game on who I think is going to win the NBA Finals, but instead, we're going to be doing a top 10. In this top 10, we're going to be looking at the top 10 best teams going into this year's playoff. There's a few factors that I wanted to put in, just kind of where they're at right now, record-wise, the situation they'll have to go through in the playoffs most likely, and just how confident I am with each of their roster. So with that said, let's get into it. Remember, subscribe if you haven't already and thank you so much we just recently eclipsed 10,000 total views and i'm looking to get better and better so let's do this before we get into this top 10 i wanted to throw around a few honorable mentions and i have three the miami heat the philadelphia 76ers and the los angeles lakers so obviously we know the lakers are on a very hot streak but but they're still in the play in so i i, I don't know how i feel about their chances because most likely to me, they're going to play the Nuggets in the first round. And if they do, they ain't doing nothing with the Nuggets. So that's why I have with the Lakers. 76ers just got back Joel Embiid. And even though Joel Embiid's going to play great and with Tyrese Maxey, they're going to be really good. I don't expect too much, especially if they have to go against Milwaukee or Boston. And then the last team I said was Miami Heat. And with the Miami Heat, I think that out of the three teams I just said, they have the best chance at doing great in the playoffs because Jimmy Butler has always been a playoff star. But at the same time, Miami's in a very particular situation, potentially having to go against Boston in the first round. If they don't get out of the play-in and they lose the first round, they win and play Boston or they go home. So they're in very deep trouble in that region. But anyways, let's get into our top 10. Coming in at the number 10 spot, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, Cleveland at one point this year was the second best team in the East by record. Milwaukee was starting to take a slump and they were doing very well, having such a great winning streak going on. But then they started to go downhill just a little bit. They're not playing as great. And right now they're vying to basically be playing every single series on the road, which is going to be a struggle for them. But they're still a powerful team. I mean, Donovan Mitchell with the youth, you got Jared Allen, you got Evan Mobley, and you got a lot more stars on that team. Problem is, uh, they're not in great position. Their best chance is playing Orlando in the first round, who has just been such a surprising team this year. That's the best chance they have. They play anybody else, I don't see them making it out of the first round. As a matter of fact, I don't see them making it far in the playoffs. I just don't see the other teams that I have not said and that I will not say, you know, below them having a better chance. So at 10, they're just kind of there. Coming in at the number nine spot, we have the Phoenix Suns. Now, I almost wanted to drop them when I was watching their game yesterday, and they only put up 10 points in the first quarter. They ended up losing by just 13. So they did have a little bit of run in a really good third quarter, but overall, they played awful. And the shooting was terrible. And it's just, it feels like a bad omen going into the playoffs, but they still have Kevin Durant. They still have Devin Booker. They have Bradley Beal, and they have some other guys that are just showing up at the right time. But their team is so underwhelming. And you know, if they play Denver, I give them no shot at beating the Nuggets. I, I barely give them a shot at beating a team like the Thunder or the Minnesota Timberwolves. So the Suns, to me, they have the pieces. I just don't think they're going to put it together. and. Because of that, they're better than the Cavaliers, in my opinion, but they're just numbered. Coming in at the number eight spot, we have the New York Knicks. Now, the Knicks look hot right now, but maybe one home playoff series, and that's all I'm giving them right now. They, the, the Knicks have one problem. They're not going to have Julius Randle going into the postseason. But Jalen Brunson is playing like an absolute freak of nature, and he's he was just the player of the month for the East, so it makes sense that going into the playoffs, he has a lot of eyes on him, and he could cement himself as a superstar in this playoff. But then outside of him, I don't know. I, I don't put this team together to go make a finals run, but I do think they'll make it out of the first round. And if they make it out of the first round, you know, that's a lot of, you know, Great momentum for the future if they can get more draft picks and get more people to put around Jalen Brunson. But at the same time, they'll most likely have to run into the Boston Celtics or the Milwaukee Bucks. And in that case, that's a problem for them. But 
number eight's not a bad spot. They, they got themselves a chance. It's just going to be a long shot. Now, with every team I'm about to say, I have them having a pretty good shot at making the finals, potentially. And this is the first one. Coming at the number seven spot, we have the Dallas Mavericks. The Dallas Mavericks have been on a tear like the Los Angeles Lakers. Luka Doncic is basically averaging a triple-double last month in March, and he was the player of the month for March for the uh, West. And Kyrie Irving is starting to come into his own. P.J. Washington, he's he's hot and cold, but he's starting to get there. Gafford is reliable. Uh, Hardaway is pretty good coming off the bench. They just have so many pieces coming together. You got Exum starting to play very good defense. Their, their team defensively is actually one of the best right now in the NBA. They have a little bit of an issue. They're playing the Clippers the first round more than likely. They did secure their self a spot, the playoff berth, so they don't have to deal with the play, and they'll be in the playoffs. They're good to go. But the Clippers, tough matchup. But if they were to beat the Clippers, they'll probably have to play the number one seed, which is either going to be Oklahoma City, Denver, or Minnesota. And if it's Minnesota or Oklahoma City, I can see the Dallas Mavericks making the Western Conference Finals. Now, if they play the Denver Nuggets, I don't know. That doesn't seem like a matchup I would enjoy watching. And I don't think that the Mavericks would win that one, even though they have great pieces. But number seven, they're a hot team. And they are not to be trifled. So the Dallas Mavericks are at the number seven spot. I should also mention that I have Luka Doncic as my MVP, but you know that could be just a little bit of biasy. But I do think he deserves MVP. Coming in at the number six spot, we have the Los Angeles Clippers. Now the Clippers just have one loaded lineup, and they just went to town on Phoenix yesterday. So I have the Clippers as a pretty high possibility of making the Western Conference Finals and potentially the NBA Finals altogether. Their lineup is loaded. They got Kawhi Leonard. They have Paul George. They have Russell Westbrook. They have James Harden. They have so many pieces. And they put it together pretty well. James Harden's been playing on selfish basketball. Kawhi's gotten back into his rhythm when he's healthy. And Paul George is playing like classic Paul George. So the Clippers, they have a really good shot. The only reason why I don't put them in the top five is because I still have a question about chemistry. At some times they look hot. At other places they look cold. So they're not super consistent, and because of that, they only get the number six spot. But if they manage to put it together, they can have a very dangerous playoff run. So be aware, the Clippers could mean business come postseason time. Coming into the number five spot, we have the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, originally, I had them higher, but just now I decided to put them lower because I'm thinking about their curtain circumstances, and I view them as one of the teams that could be upset come playoff time. And that's because I think right now they're on a little bit of a cold streak. They aren't playing as great as they were all season long. At home, they're incredible, but away, they're not playing super great. And I just see some of these teams under them having a really good shot. But Shea is playing out of his mind. He deserves an MVP candidacy. Uh, Jet Holmgren's had a great rookie season, and the rest of the team just looks great and viable. And the best part is they're a young team who has a lot of talent. So. Once they get more experience under their belt, they are true title contenders. And right now, I think they're just slightly a title contender. But if I had to match them up with Denver, I would not give them the benefit of the doubt to win that series. And I don't really see them beating the T-Wolves in a series either. It's, it's, it's weird. I don't like where the Thunder are right now as they're playing going into the playoffs. It just doesn't look great. But... I'm going to say they're higher than the Clips and the Mavericks because they've played great all year long and their team is super young and super talented. So i got to give the Thunder to the number five spot. But four teams, I have far more confidence than I do with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Coming in at the number four spot, we have the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, I thought the Bucks would be far higher going into this season because they got Damian Lillard, but I don't know. Their team looks semi-inconsistent at times, and I do not trust Doc Rivers as the head coach. But they're number four because right now they're second in the East. They have Giannis, they have Damian Lillard, and they have Chris Middleton and more pieces. They're still that same championship team with the addition of Damian Lillard. It's just having Doc Rivers isn't impressing me to put him any higher. And let's say they do get out of the first round. I think that they're better than most of the teams in the East. But then when it gets to Boston, I'm not too sure how I feel about them. So the inconsistency this year, the poor play, even with the big names on the team, 
But still, that despite that, they're still the number two seed. I just don't see them being any higher right now. So I just I, I have to, unfortunately, just keep them at the number four spot. Coming in at the number three spot, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves. They've been battling for the number one spot with the Nuggets for a while. And if they win tonight against the Nuggets, they take that number one seed with just two games left to go. Anthony Edwards has been playing amazing all year long, and I also think he deserves an MVP candidacy because he's been playing so great. I mean, last night he dropped 51 points without Carl Anthony Towns, but the T-Wolves are about to get Cat back. They have Rudy Gobert. They got Mike Conley. They have a team that is loaded for the playoffs, and they look like they're going to make a solid run. Now, against teams like the Clippers or the Dallas Mavericks, they're going to have some trouble with. And of course, you know, the Denver Nuggets are always going to be an issue. But if they can secure that number one seed, they got a chance. They have a legit shot at making the finals. They just need a lot of things to go their way. But they got the pieces and they can put it together come playoff time. This team's dangerous. I mean, Anthony Edwards is turning into a superstar right before our eyes. And I remember back when the rookie discussion was him or LaMelo Ball. He has exceeded LaMelo Ball at the highest level. And, of course, he's getting a lot of Jordan comparisons. I'm going to stay off of that for right now. But I will not deny that he is starting to become a superstar. And I think this playoffs is going to show just what kind of player he is. So Minnesota at number three makes a lot of sense. Coming in at the number two spot, we have the best record in the NBA, the Boston Celtics. Now, they got the best record. They've been dominant at home. Why aren't they number one on my list? Well, it's simple. There's two reasons. Number one, we both know who's number one. And we, we know who number one is. And number two, they have shown a level of inconsistency throughout the year. Plus, they have blown some major leads, which just makes me a little concerned for them when they have to play against some legit contenders. I think they are the best option at going to the NBA Finals from the Eastern side, no questions asked. But winning it all, now if they get anybody but the number one team on my list, then maybe I'll give them a good shot, but I don't know. But we, we can't deny how good Jason Tatum's been. Jalen Brown's obviously played great. I love the addition of Porzingis and Drew Holiday. I mean, they have every piece needed to be great, and they deserve to be as high as they are on this list. So number two is nothing to laugh at, but come on, we know who number one. And before I get to number one, I, there is another honorable mention I want to throw in there, the Indiana Pacers. I think they have a great team that can make a good playoff run, but I'm going to leave it at that. Coming in at the number one spot, it's obvious it is the defending champion Denver Nuggets. Jokic is, of course, on pace to potentially win his third MVP, even though I say it should be Luka. I, it, Jokic is still a great candidate, and if he wins, I won't put it past him. Uh they still have Jamal Murray. They still got Caldwell Pope. They still got Aaron Gordon. They still got Michael Porter Jr. They have such a loaded roster. That starting five is the best starting five in all of basketball. And they're toe-to-toe -to -toe right now with the Timberwolves and the Thunder to make the number one seed. And depending on where they are, it doesn't really matter. I find them as the favorites to win it all again for 2024. And I think a lot of people do. It's just the consistency and the chemistry that the Nuggets have is undeniable. Jokic is one of the most revolutionary centers we've seen in a long time. Being able to move the ball the way he does, dominant down in the post, and he's just, he, he, he's filled with magic. That's what he is. So obviously the Nuggets are going to be number one, but that will do it for today's list. Before I get to the outro though, I want to know what you guys think about the setup. Right here, I got my fantasy trophy for when I won fantasy football. Uh, Rangers bobblehead and I wanted to move the camera back just a little bit just so you can get this whole piece and be able to use this background as good as possible. So I hope you guys like the setup. Now, get to the outro. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you enjoyed, please subscribe if you haven't already. Of course, the next goal is 50 subscribers. And then after that, I want to push for 100. But I thank you so much for the support on the episodes and the shorts. And if you guys want, go check out all my social medias. If you want to contact me or if you want to have a sports conversation with me, go check out all my social medias. You can vaguely see them right here. But of course, they're going to be in the link of the description. 
so yeah uh the next episode i plan to do is actually the live reaction to the nfl draft now i know it's some times away and I could put another episode in. Instead, I'm going to be showing a lot of shorts from here on out until we get to that episode. And after we're done doing the live reaction, I'm going to do one little fantasy football episode. And then we're going to go all in on where to draft these players come fantasy football. And then, of course, the summer, we got some soccer matchups and just be prepared for some of these episodes that are coming out. Anyways, that'll do it for today's episode. I hope you guys have a great day. Take care, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.